And welcome back to Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival! Last time we did uh, a couple of the mini games, Acorn Chase and the Mystery Camper one. I can't remember the name of it, but this time we we're ready to get back into the main mode with April. How many players? I think last time we did three, and that actually ended up being a very good time. So, let's show off. Wait, I think we already did show off all the unlocked costumes we looked so far. So that's the thing, and last time we had Mabel. Oh shoot, <laughs> I had switched out characters. Um, character selection is a bit obtuse, if you couldn't tell. So with Mabel, I think it was off screen that I unlocked the other alt outfit, or maybe it was on screen, I can't remember. Let's just stick with that for now. Um, KK, I unlocked DJ KK, I think that was off screen. Because this is normal, this is DJ KK, so yeah. That's correct. And we're ready to go back to the mainland, now that we've done some diversions in the minigame stuff. Well, that was a weird way to put it, actually. Um, so, obviously, it goes without saying that the main event of the month is April Fools, because it's, well, in the name, <laughs> April Fools. So... Wow, this is taking a long time to load. I don't know why, but sometimes this game just does. Like, it just doesn't want to load. It's weird. Um, 10 out of 10. Ooh, I see. What's her name? Diana? Diana, yeah. Um, I'm hosting this game today. today. Let's jump right in. No, wait, did she say. Is her catchphrase no doy? <laughs> like, what? Um, it is no doy. That is really weird. I have never heard that phrase before. <laughs> um, so we have four special events this month. That's kind of a lot. So this should be a more exciting game as a result. So I should show off this is the first motion, second, third, fourth. And obviously the pattern will carry on throughout the for every character. So I think you can guess what the emotions are for everyone else, just they'll look different. And I'm pretty sure I unlocked more paths as well, off screen, because I don't know, the board map looks more fancy than last time. And going behind, going beyond just like, oh wow, there's a PlayStation on the map and stuff like that. But actually, there seems to be a lot more stuff like on the map. So obviously KK needs to should go right because happiness plus bells equals win. Perfect day to laundry, so I decided to do it for everyone. All were super happy and gave me some bells as a thank you. Wow. <laughs> Two thousand wait, three hundred bells for doing laundry, that's pretty good. Mabel's turn? I don't know why, but the Mabel amiibo I Mebo's eyebrows are a lot higher. I mean, a lot more pointed, like slanted. So it looks like the Amiibo was angry, just saying. As an April Fool's prank, someone filled the town full of presents. There were bells inside the one I opened. Pretty nice prank, actually. Uh, I think this is a good time to go into Animal Crossing tradition. In Animal Crossing GameCube, the on April Fool's, I think in the US version, I don't know if that was a thing in the Japanese version too, but in the US version, Mayor Tornimer, who I don't think we've actually seen in the game yet, um, uh, <laughs> couldn't sign a game, we just kind of ran out of time. That's totally something I would do. Um, in Animal Crossing, the original Animal Crossing, Toymer would give you, like, an NES game, actually, called Super Toymer. Uh, it wouldn't play, obviously. There was a flea on my friend <laughs> trying to catch on in the net, but I got excited and actually whacked my friend with the net. That also sounds like something I would do. Um, but to be honest, actually now that I think about it, Animal Crossing they auto lock to the flea. I guess auto lock would be the right term. Um, so it's actually if there's a flea on an animal, it's actually impossible to accidentally hit them. Kind of weird, but it's actually true. Friday, um, Tom looks turn once again. Hopefully he'll get some happiness soon. He's kind of falling behind. In every possible respect now that I look at it. Gotta go with the bells, because to me it seems like the bells are the best way to go. 
Well, nah, realized it's off food, so I picked it all and sold it. So nook. Much wow. Um. KK, but yeah, the the Super Toy Mario won't actually play because it's an April Fool's joke. <laughs> um. But it also brings up the point that the Animal Crossing games for the GameCube, and I think the N64, the Wizard no Mori, I'm pretty sure I actually had. NES games. I know the GameCube version did. I don't know if it was Animal Crossing or Animal Crossing E that or Double to No More E Plus that did in the um, Japanese version. Now, Double to No More E Plus was like the expansion of the N64 game that was released. It was basically like the American version with some added stuff released in Japan. So like Final Fantasy X, X2 International. And Final Fantasy X tend to be mastered. How they have the like content that was added into the English version from the Japanese version, in addition to just flat out bonus content. Um, bringing up the point, I've actually been playing Final Fantasy X. I've gone to the Cloister of Trials on Kilka Island, and. I mean, forgot how slow this game is. It's like nothing really has happened. Like, okay, like main characters have met up. Like Riku still hasn't joined yet, which I thought she appeared. Oh well, she was a party member at the beginning and then left. That's what. That's what it is. Um. Then, like, oh yeah, no way. Riku joins after. Uh. When does she join? I can't remember. It's been so long since I played 10 <laughs> originally, and I don't remember like anything about 10. Um, yeah, but I, I can't say it's a bad game, but it's just not like doing anything for me like when I originally played it, if that makes sense. So 10 is my favorite, one of my favorite Final Fantasies, but still, I'm not like super into it right now. Um, but honestly, I don't think that's a surprise because most of my fantasy games start out really, really slowly if you've never played the series. And, um, I mean, it's not uncommon from what I gather for people to, you know, for the early games to not even get past like the first disc. Because, uh, fun fact, uh, Final Fantasy was not actually on Nintendo consoles because after the Super Nintendo, with the N64 using cartridges, it was just completely impractical to actually make Final Fantasy on Nintendo anymore. So we moved to PlayStation. Easter or Bunny Day, Super T Bunny. Um, I'll come to let you know that spring is here. Yep, yay! Look for eggs, look for eggs. Find them in on egg spaces. How many will you find? How many will you find? Find loads and become happy. Music note. And Diana is just like chilling in the background. Like, yeah, whatever, just find eggs, do what the man says. Uh, there's a lot of conspiracy theories about Zippy T Bunny, actually. <laughs> Which sounds hilarious talking about Animal Crossing conspiracies, but it actually is a thing. Um, Zippy T Bunny, as you might be able to guess by his name, actually, actually has a zipper on the back of his costume. Thus bringing up the fan theories of who the heck is Zippy T Bunny. Um, common theories are Tori, Mirth, the Mayor of the Town, but I think in one, whoa, 22, um, I, in one of the games, Tori Mirth can actually be seen independently from Zippy T Bunny, so, that theory is out. Other common theories are, include, well, not only, f whoa, 16. So, basically, Nook got kind of crushed that turn. But, yeah, no one really knows who Zippity Bunny actually is. It's kind of weird. 3, 2, 1. Happy, happy. I guess it also is implied that whoever is in the costume totally hates his job. <laughs> Just, like, hopping around the town plaza all day long. <laughs> Though, to be honest, I can't blame him. Doesn't sound like a fun gig. So the turnip prices are fluctuating, which is actually the best, in my opinion, because you can get some really, really high spaces. Like that 271 would have been nice, but I'm standing on it. So, um, stamp. 
Looks egg themed, which makes sense for Easter. March. Uh, 208 isn't the best, but it's not like horrible either. Uh, so I'm gonna think about it. 212, 278. It's five spaces away. I think I'm gonna try to land on the 278, and then that would be a much better deal, comparatively speaking. Another six. KK is actually moving pretty far because he's getting really high rolls. Rolls. Did I have two left and one left? I can. I didn't actually look. Um. Oh shoot. Two left. <laughs> That's actually really good. Uh huh. I keep hitting X when I'm meant to. I mean to be because I'm not actually holding the game pad. Obviously, I'm just I have it next to me because frankly, holding amiibo and also holding the game pad is kind of cumbersome. So Sable has to roll like actually she can't even get there in one turn because she was one space behind KK. Oh wow. Um, like all Final Fantasies seem to get like really slow starts. It just seems to be a trend I've noticed. Uh, I think the exception would probably be 4. I think 4 gets the ball rolling pretty quickly, actually. But to be honest, it's been like a long time since I played 4. 1 too much. Well, yeah, if I got a 5, I would have been in really good shape, but I got 4. I mean, got 6. Um, yeah, that route that goes up there, that wasn't there last time. <laughs> um, but obviously, wait a minute. I'd have to count space 3, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So that's 10. Going down is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So this is actually shorter to go up, I think. Uh, but it'll cost me bells. If I go this way, I'll get happiness. So I'm gonna just take the long way, just in case. And I have horse mackerel, which is like the most worthless fish in the L of Animal Crossing next to the sea bass. Just because they're so common. So yeah, that wouldn't be worth it. Uh, I think she overshot the space I wanted to land on. That kind of stinks. Yeah, overshot. Ouch. I don't know why you spend bells like that in a board game. It's like, it seems kind of frivolous. Uh, eight. The turn the prices might crash. Did I call it or what? Uh, times like this, I wish I wasn't actually right. So, Mabel's gonna be kind of hurting this turn because she. Oh, yeah, Nook, I don't. Yeah, Nook and Sable haven't sold. So, actually, Cake is gonna be in the lead. Um, when I've, I've now also noticed it's better to take a hit in terms of happiness than uh, taking a hit for bells because with bells you can lose a ton of bells. You generally don't lose more than one or two happiness points at a time. There's the image in the background chatting at like the middle of the night for some reason. Um, I was fishing on the shore but all I could catch was garbage, getting rid of it always expensive. <laughs> I've heard the point now with this game that I was like, oh my gosh, this game isn't very exciting. All you do is roll around the board. There aren't even any mini games. I've heard the point brought up of like, does no one actually know what a board game is anymore? Because <laughs> that is, this is basically as close to an actual board game as you get in a video game. Because it is, in a lot of ways, more of a board game than Mario Party. Because Mario Party has mini games. This. You know, you have your physical pieces, essentially, and you're just moving on the board. That's all you do. It's not like, you know, rocket science or anything. It's not, like, a hard game to play. But it, at its core, it is just a board game. And it has a lot of cute stuff happen, but it's not, like, deep. Like, gameplay-wise, it's not, like, a deep game or anything, but it's, it's just cute, like this. So a ton of them, we got a nice bonus for helping out. <laughs> uh, which is actually funny because, again, if you haven't played the old games, Nook actually is the sword keeper, and this, in the later games, he does real estate. So, it's actually funny seeing these events of him working at the shop as a volunteer, because, well, he used to run the shop as a full-time career, 
the old games. <laughs> I really couldn't tell the difference. I have never had coffee. I really want to someday. Because I was like, oh my gosh, coffee is the best. But, uh, never gotten around to it. Um, Katrina or Katrina? <laughs> so many options. I think I'm gonna go with Katrina. <laughs> While I'm sitting here, I'm just looking at the amiibo faces. They all have different like numbers on the bottom. Like the Keiki one says three nine five zero 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 A J A B G one. Like, what does that mean? Like, what are the numbers? Are they like manufacturing numbers? Um, apparently. Also, one thing I've noticed is that Mabel's off center. Her, the amiibo, but I was looking at pictures on like Nintendo's website, and the amiibo just is kind of off center. It's like, why did they design it that way? How weird. Um, 62 would be a huge loss, so nope. Not gonna sell you quite yet. Because none of the other ones are that off center, but I feel like. Also, it looks like there's like glue hardened around the Mabel one's feet. So, it's not the best quality Mabel. Um, all the other ones I have are like really good quality though. No like major defects or anything. I've also tried leveling Isabel off screen just because four players is just kind of a lot for um, a video because it takes like an hour and 20 minutes. <laughs> so, yeah, that's not. Oh wow, I should wait one more turn because 95 is better than 91. It would have been better than 91. Uh, so basically, Mabel's last hope is to get a uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, it looks like. Because then she'd be able to sell turnips for at least a mild profit. I don't remember it costing 500 bells. I thought it was more than that. <laughs> I'd have to check, I guess. Five! Okay. I actually got what I wanted, I think. Yep. Well, I will be losing happiness. Uh, well, I'll make it up by selling all the turnips, so that's cool. KK still has a pretty sizable lead though because of uh, turnips, and also for some reason he's actually happier than the others. Fishing turn for some reason is really early in the month this month. Because that also would cancel out uh, the double dice day, which kind of stinks because I would prefer that to the fishing turn because you can move farther, you can get more done. Nook is not going to be reeling in a good fish. Also that base right there, the green leaf of the house, that's a horrible space for building stuff. I don't know who would build stuff there in an actual game right next to Town Hall. Uh, I guess I could make like a park there, if, a park there if I have the option. Might be kind of a nice thing to include, just background thing, but like... I wouldn't want to include like the police station right next to Town Hall, that would just be weird. I put the police station kind of by itself a little bit, just, I don't know, just want that kind of isolated. Uh, just didn't want to have it right next to your house, because that'd be weird, like, having a police station right next to your house. Is that the celebrant card? I can't remember what it was actually called. So it looks like it's between Mabel and KK at this point. Looks like KK won, though. Um... So, yeah, there's a fishing tourney in the actual main games, I think, last week, but uh, I forgot to actually participate. Da -da -da -da, Tom Nook. Congratulations! Um, yeah, in the summer months, actually, the fishing tourney is replaced with the Bug Off, which is a bug caching competition, not like what you might expect for something called the bug off, but it's a pun. I'm requesting there's a lot of puns, a lot of them are really horrible. <laughs> um, this is something you have to take with the series, the horrible puns, along with the good puns. Also, with Kiki's eyebrows on the amiibo, they're actually not a texture. They're actually like kind of embossed, sort of. Not embossed, that's not the right word. But they do not- it's not just like Kiki's head and every- all the- like his eyes and eyebrows are just like painted on, but they actually have a bit of a texture to them. 
Um, so yeah, the Animal Crossing Amiibo are really high quality. Um, the only sucky part is that there are too many of them. Uh, it's getting a little bit out of control because of how many Animal Crossing Amiibos there truly are. Showing the game, uh, solid turnovers here from what, 60 years. 86 bells, that's pretty good. Uh, it's when you start seeing them for like, a hundred, that it gets a lot riskier. Because typically there aren't too many spaces below 90 I've noticed, when the stock prices aren't crashing. So, if it isn't crashing, then you can at least sell at a pretty decent amount. Um, wow, Nook is almost to his second checkpoint, I think. Yeah, second. So he's a little behind the other two, I think. No, actually he's pretty much in the same place. Decided to go on a challenging mountain hike, but it was too hard. Well, it was called a challenging mountain hike for a reason. Um, yeah, all the trees are blooming now, because it's now spring in the game. It was nice and warm today, so I went for a picnic by the windmill with a cup of coffee. Not a red cup, though, because it's March. <laughs> Let's see. So she's got her second, so she's right up there with KK. I wow, Tom Duck is actually getting kind of stomped right now. Uh, it's got a poor performance from the old Nookster. <laughs> Turning my house into a gym. Uh, yeah, that would not be popular in real life. Yeah, steady. So again, when they're steady, like 87 is- Whoa, 177. That's actually like- That's over double when what they repaid for them. So this could be a really game-changing week. So 6 would be nice. Actually, Nook is in a really bad area because there's like nothing good where Nook is. He's past all the really good spaces. Nook, I'm, I'm KK and Sable could hypothetically go left instead of... Let's ma wait a minute, I just called him Sable, I meant Mabel. I get them mixed up a lot. I'm surprised their other sister hasn't gotten an amiibo yet, actually. Uh, yeah, what I mean is we could go left here and try to hit aim for this 171, just kind of loop like this, and then go around here, and then loop back around over there. Or we could just try to go along the low grossing route. I think I'm gonna have him veer off, actually. I'm gonna have KK go up, say Mabel go left, see which is more efficient, actually. Because when you roll ones constantly, it's hard to tell what the most efficient path is. Because you'd have to rig up perfect RNG to uh, actually be able to do an accurate testing or something like that. Oh man, I actually changed my mind because I don't want to lose that much in a row. <laughs> Had a jam session with my friends. It never looks like they're actually playing the drums. It looks like they're just kind of clapping. Or just kind of waving their arms around. <laughs> Jazz hands. Which brings us to brings up the point that I have no clue where Jazz Hands actually comes from. It sounds... It sounds weird. Um, the term Jazz Hands. But it's just, to me, it looks like just waving your arms around aimlessly. It doesn't look like actually doing anything. <laughs> yeah, it's considered a thing. Yeah, 135. Not, not the best, not the worst. Um, yeah, the other two can roll sixes consistently. We could make it to that 180 before the stock prices. Oh hey, look, I rolled a 6, just like I wanted. How lucky. Actually, 164 wouldn't be too bad. It might be worth it to sell, just to avoid potentially taking a loss, in case the prices plunge later on. Um, uh, maybe I'll actually pass up KK in terms of board progress, because he got a lot of really bad rolls all in a row. 414. Um, the numbers are significant somehow, but I don't remember why. 414. Hey, hope everyone rolls ones. <laughs> Except KK, because KK wants to actually go somewhere. 
So I'm going to just play a little bit on the safe side and sell off half now, meaning I basically made up all my pro made, like profits already. Um, did that just land on the exact same space? Oh, one head. Oh well. I saved the life for myself from three years ago. I really appreciate my words of encouragement to me. It's weird cheering yourself up, actually. And I think Sable, the Nooklings, uh, Cap'n, and a few other characters getting Amiibo later on. I don't remember who exactly. Uh, wow. Either lose money or lose happiness. So I guess I'm gonna lose money just because I have to go out of my way. And I would kind of be... It would be more productive in the long run to lose... To basically take the hit. And not have to go around the board multiple times. KK might actually make it up to like the really high spaces. Uh, yeah, he's almost there actually. As long as the prices don't crash the next turn, Nook will be able to solidify. Uh, why do you keep calling him Nook? KK will be able to solidify his lead. Can I roll a six here. Roll five. That that works for me. I think that's the same space KK's on. Yeah. So that might turn into something better. I've noticed this is actually a thing. Um. Ooh. Wow. <laughs> Whoa. Wow. That is a game changer right there. Um. Holy cow. They switched money. So it was a lucky event for, for Mabel. It was a really unlucky event for KK though. Um. But I've noticed the trend that when you land on the same space as someone, it kind of, it almost like, it can sometimes negate the effects of the bad space. In that case, it just basically helped Mabel and mess up KK's chances. Um, what else can I talk about? Um, fishing tourneys. I should have mentioned this earlier. You can completely cheese the fishing tourney in the old games. Oh, actually no, in the new game. And the old game, you just catch a fish in advance, keep it in your house, and then just turn that one in. Because you have until 6 p.m. So you can actually just catch a fish in advance, then turn it in as soon as possible, and just sweep the fishing journey. <laughs> it's actually not efficient though, because you can actually kind of mess yourself up. Because, um,. You get prizes for each time you top your record, so you don't want to actually top your record too soon, because otherwise you actually make fewer bells that way. It's actually more advantageous to basically just kind of stall and just just break your record by small increments than to break it all at once. So Nook is basically back where he started in terms of money, so that kind of thanks for him. Can't remember if that was a good space or not. Uh, no, it's the one right, right after it. So if I get a one card from Katie, that'd be pretty sweet. <laughs> um, any like one to three cards would be good. You don't have any cards, Mabel. That's so sad. But don't worry. Let's play a game. Oh, speaking of Mabel, Gravity Rush uh, is ending. Main characters. I'm pretty sure his name Mabel in that. Um. I haven't ever watched a whole episode of Gravity Rush. It, it's one of those shows that to me is like sometimes funny but also is borderline grating to me. Oh, what an 85. I totally didn't even notice the value of this space. So Mabel's back in it now. As we're entering the halfway point, or have passed the halfway point. Um. Like, let's see, I started watching Legend of Korra, and I'm actually really liking the first episode. Um, I haven't finished the first episode yet, but I got like 10 minutes in, and I'm enjoying it a lot, actually. So I like the first, like, like half of an episode of Steven Universe, and thought it was actually really good. Because um, you're always afraid stuff is overhyped, because stuff like Steven Universe is just like, the cat's meow right now. Um... I'm pretty sure I just butchered that metaphor, but and you and you always like well you're always worried that like oh well this just be completely overrated, 
and I'm actually liking both shows, so I'm I'm really happy about that actually. Uh, I don't know how much more I'll watch just because you know, what Legend of Korra is like four seasons, and that's a lot. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm enjoying both so far. I don't have the first episodes, but I haven't finished either entirely yet. I've well, like, the universe is like the whole SpongeBob format, where it's like two little segments kind of crammed together. No, not SpongeBob, but like like Garfield and Friends. Um, so I've seen like the first segment, which I enjoyed. It was like it's kind of weird because it doesn't seem like the thing I would like, because it's kind of kind of campy. I think would be a good way to put it. But, um, I think it works. For some reason, something about Steven Universe just clicks. Tonally. I think it's because, like, the humor has a good blend to it. Because some of the characters are, like, really kind of snarky, I think would be a good way to put it. But others are kind of more, like, silly. So I feel like the humor balances out in a pretty decent place. Because there's kind of a... A blend of humor styles. It's sort of like the Lego movie, how like some of the humor is kind of grating, but a lot of the humor is actually really good. <laughs> so it's sort of it appeals to broad. I can tell why the show appeals to a broad audience because it does seem, at least from like the first ten minutes I saw, it seems to have a pretty good blend of like kind of silly humor and. Um, actually, like, funny, like, sarcastic kind of humor. That makes any sense whatsoever. Um, yeah, I liked it. Enough, at least, to probably keep watching it. Uh, ooh, almost got doubles. Uh, <laughs> doubled ones is always the worst you could possibly get there in the game, though. It's like a Mario Party, it's like, oh, Snake Eyes, I, I'm so proud of that. <laughs> the worst is when you get like a, a like a triple mushroom, and then you roll like 1-1-1. One, one, one. Because triple mushrooms are worth like 20 coins, I think. That's like as much as a star. So, and if you just roll a 3 with it, then that kind of stinks. But you get coins, that's actually th something in Mario Party that happens. Uh, if you get doubles, you actually do get coins, so it's not a complete loss at least. So 260, 160, and 110, Nook is definitely in kind of a rough spot right now. Um, I love the little party hats the characters have. Also, is that tree getting bigger? I haven't really noticed, but in the main games, there's actually a system where day one, you plant a tree at your town square. And I think it takes like two years or so until it's like a really humongous tree. Um, it's actually really cool because there's kind of a sense of progression to New Leaf because the tree in your town is so much bigger by the end. Not the end, because you can't finish Animal Crossing, but like after a couple of years, the, the little sapling you planted on day one is humongous. And it's just kind of a satisfying feeling, it's knowing, having a visual representation of how far you've actually come in the game. When after walking, cherry blossoms were in full bloom, they were so beautiful I was on cloud nine. Um, yeah, this would be the month of actual major anime convention, now that I think about Sakura Khan. Uh, <laughs> yeah. The problem is, Sakura Khan is in Seattle, and typically the cherry blossoms are either not blooming because it's winter and it's still cold in March slash April, or on the other hand, you can have the case where like the the trees all blossom for like a week, and by Sakura Khan, they're all they're all gone. Sakura means cherry blossom. I should have also pointed out that out sooner, but uh, yeah, 
So the chance of actually seeing cherry blossoms during Sakura Con week <laughs> weekend, from what I've seen, is actually really bad. <laughs> I've never been to Sakura Con. Um, I'm kind of, I prefer to go to PAX than Sakura Con. Because I'm more of a gamer than an anime fan. At least these days, it's kind of gone back and forth. Right now, I'm more of a, g a gamer than an anime fan. But, what was I going to say? Um, yeah, so I'd prefer to go to PAX out of the choices. Both would be a lot of fun, I imagine, but... I can meet all my heroes at PAX. Couldn't do that at Sakura Con as much. And by heroes, I mean all the people who basically inspired me to do this let's play stuff because it's like again I wouldn't be let's playing if I hadn't actually seen other people do it first and inspire me to actually do it I think I've given this no way I was gonna say I've given this speech before but I actually haven't because it's on a video that hasn't come out yet uh, it's the new let's play after no way Okay, I've recorded like three let's like four wait four let's plays in advance as the time of this. Not counting Yoshi because that's currently going on. But after wait five technically because I did like a hard mode run of Star Fox. I'll be starting. Uh. Well, actually, depending on when this video goes up, it might actually be starting today. <laughs> no wait, no. This would be Luigi's Mansion's finale if this goes up on Tuesday. So, if this goes up on Tuesday, yeah, Star Fox is starting shortly after Luigi's Mansion ends. Which is really soon from when I'm actually recording this. Um, and then... And I think after that is... And after both Star Fox and Luigi's Mansion and Wind Waker are done, I think I also squeezed... I think after that is Mario Sunshine? I want to say Mario Sunshine because I, I can't remember for sure. I don't know why I'm tipping my hand this early to be honest. Um, uh, and then after Mario Sunshine is Pikmin. So I think on Pikmin is when actually when I discuss this. But basically I, I, can, I can tell now. What the heck. Just know that when I talk about this in Pikmin later on. And then yeah, this was recorded, like, that was recorded way in advance. But basically, I started Let's Playing just because I watched other people do it, and I thought, hey, that looks fun. Um, and there's other reasons to that, actually, because, for example, one of my favorite Let's Players is, uh, Miss Ella, who... I saw in, let's see, it was the Runaway Guys Fortune Street playthrough. Which was the first video I saw with Missy, and um, then later I saw the later she was in the one video that was like the Wii U Smash tournament that the Runaway guys did with other Let's players, um, and thus I discovered her channel. I started watching Super. I saw her Super RPG Let's Play, and really enjoyed it. And then I after that I saw. Well, actually, okay, by the time I finished watching all of SMRPG, uh, Miss Anel's, um, Zelda Ocarina of Time 3D Master Quest, that is a mouthful, playthrough, was getting near the end, so I actually started watching that too. Um, I'm pretty sure I managed to catch up pretty much when it was ending. Like, I'm pretty sure I watched the finale of that Let's Play around the same time it actually ended. Meaning, yeah, I kind of binge watch stuff in general. Not just Let's Plays, just period. I tend to just binge watch. Um, basically, part of the reason she did it, I think, was because it was like the 5th anniversary of her first Let's Play, which was the original Ocarina of Time. And it was not a very good Let's Play, to be honest. Because there's first. First Let's Plays are always really bad, I can attest to that. Uh, I feel like I've gotten better at this, but not great. But my point is... Hearing her discuss how... She basically started Let's Playing in like 2010. And then... 
and so it sort of helped her to build confidence that sort of inspired me to want to actually become a let's player too because to be honest i have like i am not the most sh what's the word chatty not chatty i'm not the most social person in the world so i thought maybe hearing Masse talk about how let's plays helped her out to be more uh, what's the word? Less of a. I think she said like something about having the social skills of a hermit crab or something like that. Um, but basically, seeing her just talk about stuff about her let's playing journey, I guess you could call it, made me think, hey, maybe I should try to do this too, and maybe that would help me not be completely inept at social situations. <laughs> um, well, they actually balance up money again. First they trade money, now they have the same amount of money. Which is actually bad, because this is a really tight race right now. Oh shoot, and now Mabel's behind. Today was weeding day, so I went out to do some weeding, but it was way too much work for me. I had to hire someone else to help. Uh, weeding day, I think this is like Arbor Day? I don't really know what that's supposed to be. I think it might be supposed to be Arbor Day. Dr. Shunk again. Um, I don't remember if we actually saw his uh, routine this game. This is frankly good because it's such a long event. Now that's why I decided to become a Let's Player again. You'll probably... I think that story comes up again in Pikmin. I'm not 100% sure because I recorded that in summer. Like in September. Which would have been a long time ago so I don't remember. <laughs> this thing about made me depressed. Look, always thinking about work. Uh, Kike's turn. Roll the five, and... Actually, no, Kike's gone all the way around. And Mabel as well, so... Oh, hey. Yeah, see, like, that negated the effects of the bad space. It's actually bad for Mabel, though, because she needs to actually pull ahead of Kike. Find some way to do so. Uh, yeah. Let's see, who else do I watch a lot of Let's Plays? Pretty much the people I watch Let's Plays have all connected to the Runaway Guys. Because that was like one of the very... F that was one of the first YouTube channels I actually saw, if I recall correctly. I think I'd seen like WRTP first, then I found the Runaway Guys shortly after. Um... Oh, I remember what it was. Uh, it's because WRTP did a playthrough of the first Mario Party, I think. And, um... So, it got me inspired, like, 2014, for perspective, to look up other Mario Party playthroughs. And then, of course, that was their Mario Party 1, the 3 were are very popular Let's Plays for the Runway Guys, so I found, that, found their channel. And then I found a ton of other Let's Players through TRG. <laughs> it's like... Because I follow all three of them. And like... I'll like follow all three of their videos. And then like... Because then like Masei Anello is frequently a guest. Luca Chin is frequently a guest. Josh Jepsen, Steven plays... Um... Oh, who else? Oh, who am I forgetting? But yeah, basically all the YouTubers I follow all were basically found through the Runaway Guys. Um, and it's funny, I've actually found a lot of music because of that too, because I... Because like... Um, oh, who was it? Like, I think it's Masei Nella and Chaka Conroy who are friends with Aegisaurus, who... Or Adriana, as some people call her. Uh, which is funny because she doesn't go by her YouTube name for her Twitter. That's confusing to me. But basically, thus I found a lot of music through that as well. Through the Runway Guys because of Friends of Friends, basically. And collaborations. It's weird how, many, how much of the stuff I watch on YouTube is all connected. Um, what else?
Da, 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 da. I'm just trying to think of anything else to say. Oh yeah, Turnip Prices Crash. So this is gonna be a low scoring game because Turnip Crash, turn the Turnips crashed so much, and we're not gonna be able to recoup much in terms of profit. So in the route ahead, there is not a single positive space. So buying 310 Turnips was actually a very bad decision. How about up here? Um, nothing. <laughs> that stinks. So, let's just go up. If they switch money again, then there's a whole new ball game yet again. Nope. That would have been really weird. 68, not good price. Uh, that 100 wouldn't be too bad because I. I <laughs> well, never mind. But, I like, but the turnips are being sold for what, 109, I think? <laughs> Laughed and shook her head. <laughs> um, wow, the sword looks kind of empty. But anyway, because the turnips were at 115, so from what I can tell, 100 seems to be the closest price we'll be able to actually get. And watch, the turnips are gonna go up on like the last turn. Um, I'm just trying to think of all the other YouTubes actually, YouTubers I actually watch. Um, yeah, but I'm drawing a blank, seriously. My friend and I had a picnic under the cherry blossoms. Don't worry if cherry blossoms fall into your food. Food before flowers any day. <laughs> oh yeah, 600 bells. Um... This is probably the best deals Nook is gonna get this game, unfortunately, so... Yeah, this is not a good game because the turnips crashed. I actually like the fact that the turnips do crash, though, it kind of... It creates the whole risk versus reward kind of style. Um, hey, this game needs anything it can get, to be honest, in terms of gimmicks. I wouldn't even call it a gimmick, I'd just call it a feature, because... Like, a lot of Mario parties are luck-based, uh, but this game is way more luck-based than any Mario party I've ever seen, but it's not too bad. I mean, like, actual board games are luck because it's rolling a dice. Uh, well, actually, come to think of it, you can manipulate dice, I think. I'm pretty sure if you're, like, really good at dice rolling, you could basically choose what you land on. But not in a video game, obviously, because you push a button, you're not actually rolling a physical dice. Die. Dice, die. Plural of dice. Wait a minute, why am I saying plural of dice? It would be singular, because you're only rolling one dice. There's some games where you actually roll two, like... Yahtzee. <laughs> um, which would be die, I think. Dices. Yeah, dices does not sound right. Um, uh, KK might, wait a minute, how many bells does Nook have? I'll have to double check. Also, wait a minute, up ahead there's like nothing worthwhile. I'm gonna just sell at the last possible moment just in case something happens, like the turnips go up at the very last minute. But at this point, Sable, why do I keep calling her that? Mabel might actually win, because she's... Kind of gotten herself a pretty decent lead over the other two. In terms of bells, because she sold for the highest price. Why does KK have like a little rainbow? Oh, the rainbow was the next space over. <laughs> Wahaha, this time the prize goes to Tom Nook. Most hearty congratulations, Tom Nook. Uh, he didn't say why he congratulated him. He just gave him money. Because <laughs> normally he's like, well, for, well, you've been good at saving your money. Um, if the socks are closed today, I'll be kind of cheesed. <laughs> uh, the sock closures I've discovered are apparently completely random. But uh, to be honest, if they don't happen in the last turn, it doesn't matter. If they happen, like, at during any time during the last week, it really hurts. Because normally in the last week is kind of a short week. So if I roll a f uh, 4, I'll be kind of annoyed. <laughs> Yeah, two. So I think I'm gonna take a chance and go here. This might 
cost cake in the game actually. Cause this is pretty neck and neck actually. Um Mabel, I think one. I think this might be also the closest game we've actually seen so far. Cause I think it'll only be a difference of maybe like three happy points. Three or four well, five now. <laughs> Probably four or five. Good job everyone, no doy. I should say no doy. Cause I don't have Diana in my town. So I, I don't know. Ouch. Uh I just could buy that way too fast. And I forgot to look at the detailed results. <laughs> oh, so I just totally botched that. Whole thing. Mabel won. Tom Nook was second. Wait, no, KK was second, barely. And Tom Nook was dead last. Not even close. Kinda sucks for KK because I almost got to a level up. Uh, Nook is probably nowhere near a level up because this is his last one. Actually, it's pretty close. Hmm. Like two more games for Nook and he'll level up. I'm hoping to get Nook to at least Nook to max level by the end of this. Next time I might switch out Isabelle for uh, KK as well, just for variety. KK or Ma well, Mabel just leveled up, so I think I'll switch out Mabel and Isabelle. Because I keep forgetting I'm actually going to show off costumes now, instead of later. Um, and yeah, we got a ton of happy- we got like 5 happy tickets, so we'll be able to la unlock the last mode. And then we can devote all of our happy tickets to just um, sprucing up the board map some more. Open this, reset the bop. This looks horrible. I mean, you saw my performance in uh, the uh, the acorn mode. That this is the same kind of gimmick where you're just manipulating cards to do different actions, which is apparently something I'm really horrible at. Um. I'm just gonna pop into November really quickly just to show off some stuff. Actually, I'm gonna go four. So Nook, we didn't unlock anything for him for KK. Uh, we didn't actually unlock anything for KK either. Duh. What am I thinking? I'll unlock it off screen. Uh, Mabel, we unlocked something. Oh hey, that's cool. Uh, the like Gracie uniform. And then I should also show off real quick Isabel. There's her basically her winter uniform. That's her, that and that is her like rest of the uniform, fall winter. So yeah, that's basically it. I'll do some more leveling off screen and lock more stuff. Probably spruce up the board game, but for now, I think that's it. For it. So next time, Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival, we will be doing May, which looks like a pretty boring month actually. Like nothing happens in May. <laughs> Um, but there are a lot of opportunities to buy and sell turnips, so that's good for full week, so it should be a pretty hectic game.